and chew the skin from your bone. If you don't move to the couch, you'll be dead by morning. Steven! Still, I said nothing. I know you can hear me, Steven. You're awake now. Why don't you come back into the bedroom? Sorry if this spoils your plans. She began laughing. Welcome back to your nightmares, my children. This is Mr. Midnight speaking. I welcome you all to my humble abode. Today, I will be sharing with you some scary demonic possession stories. These stories are good for a creepy scary night, so sit tight. Let's begin, but before we do, make sure you like and subscribe, because if you do not, I will personally possess you. So now buckle up, and always remember, the darkness always follows. I will now leave you with my narrator so enjoy my girlfriend talks in her sleep she's been saying the most horrible things recently i'm infatuated with her utterly infatuated and it wasn't at a healthy level far from it i would think about her every moment she was away I would sometimes sit on my couch and just stare at my phone, waiting for her to text. I'd tell myself, don't contact her, don't. It will come off as too strong. But then I'd still find myself clicking her name on my contact list, before my inner voice would continue. You don't want her to know how desperately smitten you are with her. It's unattractive. It will scare her off. No, you must wait for her to call you this time. And it was excruciating and exhausting. Almost unbearable. I once heard that the ancient Greeks believed that falling madly and irrationally in love with somebody was a curse that you would wish upon your enemies. I could never understand what they meant. After all, isn't falling head over heels in love the ultimate goal nowadays? But now that it's happened to me, I have to say, the ancient Greeks were right. This is a curse. I was barely in control of myself, almost as though my infatuation with her had possessed me. The two of us were sleeping together, but still in the dating phase. We were at that make or break era of blossoming relationship where we'd either have the talk and formally be in a relationship or we'd start to slowly drift apart. The latter of which I don't think I'd be able to cope with. Honestly, I wouldn't be able to. Almost everything about her captivated me. The way she held her hand over her mouth when she laughed. How she'd caress the pendant of her necklace when she was frightened. How she twirled her hair in her finger when she was excited. All of it. Her smell. Her smile. Her eyes. Yeah, I know. It probably makes you sick reading about it. I feel the same way. I was never the hopeless romantic type, but now I can't stop fantasizing about her. I think about us doing the long three hour hike up to that magnificent view from one of our first dates, to that first kiss as we overlooked the lights of the city. But this time, I'd get down on one knee, bring out the ring, and, well, you know what would happen next. Alright, fine, I'll stop. Yes, this is a girl, 
I'd only been casually dating for a couple of months. I shouldn't be thinking about proposing yet. I know that. I'm just barely able to control myself any longer. I feel as though I'm losing power over the decisions I make. And that brings me to why I'm here writing this out at the moment. It started with the first real thing that troubled me about her. We'd never actually spent a night together, no matter how late she was over. Once either of us showed signs of being tired, she'd up and leave. She wouldn't leave awkwardly or in anger, just a casual kiss goodnight, a smile and a call me soon. It was something I didn't really even notice the first few times she did it. But after almost eight weeks of dating, it was becoming strange. I'd have to ask her about it. It took drinking almost an entire bottle of wine before I had the courage to do it. She looked almost defeated when I asked and lowered her eyes in embarrassment. I knew this talk would come eventually, she started. She took in a deep breath with a long drawn out exhale. Recently, she paused again. I've started talking in my sleep. She shook her head in embarrassment. It's called Sam Linequi. I looked it up. I shrugged and laughed out loud. My demeanour seemed to say, That's it? No, Stephen. Listen, she said. She wasn't laughing. It's bad. It is completely out of control. It's not just random words or gibberish. No, it's horrible. I say horrible, disgusting things. She was starting to raise her voice, breathe heavy and tear up. I approached her and held her. I told her it couldn't be that bad. I told her to spend the night. I told her she was probably exaggerating. I was wrong. The night she stayed at my house, she warned me of something before falling asleep. Whatever you do, don't wake me up. It makes me really scared and disorientated if that happens. And don't respond to me. Just ignore it. I nodded and agreed. If it becomes too much, she continued, just leave the room and sleep on the couch. I won't mind. I told her not to worry about it. I told her that it wouldn't be a big deal. I told her I wouldn't leave to the couch. I'd stay beside her in the bed. But I was wrong. I couldn't even last one night. We both fell asleep without incident. I don't know how many hours passed, but I woke up in the dark with the sensation that someone was watching me. And then I remembered she was with me. She was actually spending the night. I smiled. But then I noticed the shadowy outline of her sitting up on the bed. She was looking down at me, staring. It creeped me out, I'll admit it. Her posture was entirely different. It was as though it wasn't even her at all. Then she spoke. It wasn't her voice that I heard. It was much lower and gravelly, like something out of a horror movie. I'll chew the skin from your bones, she said. I froze. At first, I just kept looking at her. This was not at all what I expected. I thought it would be more like the way Tourette's is often portrayed. Just random swearing and shouting. I honestly thought to myself, what will I do if she attacks me right now? What if she really 
does try to chew the skin from my bones. But then she just lied down and went back to sleep. I was creeped out. I tried to lie back down and ignore her but struggled. I couldn't even close my eyes without thinking. Maybe she's sitting up again and staring at me. And then one time I rolled over to look at her. And she was. Her face was pressed right towards mine. Her breath was foul and rotted. Something that was most certainly not normal for her. She spoke again in the same voice as before. If you don't move to the couch, you'll be dead by morning. That did it for me. I sat up in a moment and headed for the living room. She made some sort of wheezing sound as I left. I think it was supposed to be laughter. I was lying on the couch, but I wasn't going to be able to fall back to sleep. I was far too shaken. I was staring out towards the window, hoping to see the first few hints of the sun rising. And then I thought I heard something from the bedroom. I listened, and then I heard it again. Stephen! It was that same low and gravelly voice. It sounded like a witch. I tried to just ignore it at first, but then it continued. Stephen! Still, I said nothing. I know you can hear me, Stephen. You're awake now. Why don't you come back into the bedroom? The voice barely sounded human. Or maybe you'd prefer if I can come to you. I still didn't say anything. I was told not to. But I listened. If I heard her start walking towards the bedroom door. I'm not even joking. I would have run right out of the apartment. But she had asked me not to respond to her sleep talking. So I didn't. And then I heard her once more. Sorry if this spoils your plans. She began laughing. The two of you were supposed to walk that trail again. She started. I wasn't even remotely prepared for what she'd say next. You'd both be so tired when you'd reach the top. You'd look over the city, then you'll get on one knee and bring out the ring. She began laughing. And that's when I realized this wasn't just a problem with Steve talking. It was something much more. Something supernatural. I had never told anybody about my proposal fantasy. There was simply no way she could have known about any of it. This was no longer about merely talking in one sleep. This was about possession. I can't go back into the bedroom. I have no idea what would happen if I did. Instead, I'm going to wait it out, holding up in my living room until the sun rises. I have a couple of hours left till morning. I can hear her laughing occasionally in the bedroom. It's still not her voice. Still that same low pitch cackle. But as I sit on my couch routing this out, here's what scares me the most. Maybe my infatuation and utter obsession with her wasn't normal. I said before that I felt like I was losing control of myself. Most why I believe that the typical falling in love story, no, I feel that the infatuation I felt was the entity slowly taking control of me. Of it controlling my thoughts, fears, ambitions and anxieties. Maybe once I become completely absorbed, a transfer would occur and she would be free of it. I know I should leave, 
that I should open the front door, get in my car and drive away from here. But I can't. I can't leave her. I've already lost control. I'm infatuated with her. Utterly infatuated. Saw a demon possessing someone. I've shared this story with close friends over the years and I still completely stand by it. Simply put, when I was a kid, I very clearly had extra senses and abilities that eventually shut down shortly after witnessing this event and which now, 20 years later, I'm starting to try to find ways to slowly reopen. This was not my first time seeing evil spirits, demons, or sensing them. But it was the first time I felt seen by one. I went to an extremely large university in the US. In my second year, a transfer student arrived and I developed a strong crush on him. We are still in contact, thanks to Facebook, though nothing ever materialized between us. The following year, a master student transferred into a department and she and he became immediate besties. There was something super strange about this girl, something not authentic. But strange yet, she was immediately super popular. It seemed like everyone just fell in love with her, would bend over backwards for her. And as a result, she was able to get away with a lot of things. I used to witness her manipulating students and professors, situations that I could sense that she somehow knew that I saw through her. Of course, she did everything possible to block me and prevent me any access to the guy I was crushing on. And when it seemed like she he was finally showing interest in me, she swiftly got in the way of that. The odd thing is that no one else seemed to notice how shady she was. Everyone just thought she was amazing and sweet and funny except one of my best friends, who was a few years older than either of us. She confirmed what I was picking up on, and knew something wasn't right about this girl. Well, time went by, and I got used to her presence, but this unsettling feeling I would get around and about her never went away. Sometimes so strong, I would feel really off in her presence. One clear, beautifully sunny spring day, I was walking back into campus. Our department's buildings were very close to the edge of campus where all the stores and restaurants and frat houses were. I had been coming back from lunch and walking through this wide open space between two very large buildings. Directly ahead was the quad. Although ours had a specific name and shape, and just behind the large building on the right was a smaller, oddly designed building. This girl was walking from between these two buildings at an angle away from where I was, crossing my path at a diagonal and heading towards the quad. Given her direction, she could not and did not see me, but I had full view of her. She stepped out from the shadows of the two buildings into full, open sunlight, no clouds, completely indirect sunlight, with absolutely nothing nearby to cast a shadow on her. In an instant, I got a super strong and strange feeling as she was covered in a pitch black shadow. I stopped walking as I was shocked to see this. And that's the moment a horrible black creature manifested, rose up from her back, turned over her left shoulder to look at me in a serpentine fashion and hissed at me with glaring yellow eyes and a mouth full of sharp teeth. 
I saw it and it saw me. I was absolutely terrified and couldn't move. It then reabsorbed into her as quickly as it had appeared and the dark spot that surrounded her went away and she just continued walking along like nothing had happened. I never saw it again and after that I stopped hating the girl and just felt really sorry for her but I would do anything to keep my distance from her and gave up any hopes of hooking up with that guy. I then continued to pray to stop seeing demons and evil spirits. It stopped but once in a while I still will get a strong read from someone. I don't know what became of her and if she ever rid herself of that presence. I hope she did. Has anyone else seen something similar? Well my children, I thank you all for listening. I hope these two stories frightened you and scared you. I'll see you again very soon. So until then, love the darkness as it always follows.